So we've got a ton of brand new information about Outriders that just dropped. And this info is going to be especially useful before you even head into Outriders. So whatever you do, store it to your memory banks because it's going to help you big time. We're going to be taking a look at how item level progression spans across story world tiers and expedition challenge tiers as well. This is going to be very useful for those of you that really want to optimize your time in getting the best loot. Uh, and also we're going to be talking about for those that are getting outsiders through the Xbox Game Pass, a little bit of a word of warning about how you can actually still preload that instead of purchasing the entire game. So uh, we'll get into that in just a moment. Plus some new responses from the dev team about a lot of various issues and requests from the community. We're gonna be talking about multiplayer scaling and gear level caps, as well as how do armor stat rolls work and much, much more. So let's dive in. Hey everyone, what's happening? Open World Games here, hope you're doing good and let's do this. Now also before I get into this, I wanna let you know I have started up an Outriders Discord check it out in the description below so if you are wanting to look for a group if you're wanting to find out farming tactics share your builds uh discuss legendary finds how you found these weapons see that description below and you will be able to find players to game with and also find people that are on the similar world tier as you that sort of thing so check it out Hope to see you in the Discord because I'm going to be waiting for you. I will be in there welcoming you. All right, so let's go ahead and start here. Uh, this is from Fu Fubite, who says, How item level progression spans across story, world tiers, and expedition challenge tiers. This is super important. It says, I compiled information from the demo and expedition videos to find the pattern of item level progression across all story, world tiers, and expedition challenge tiers. The rules and constraints for a max level 30 character are as follows it says max item level at world tier 15 is 42 max item level at challenge tier 15 is 50 you must play at least challenge tier 9 to prog progress excuse me your item level beyond story world tiers opposed to world tiers the item levels in challenge tiers don't increase in linear but in patterns because of the feedback from the comments in regards to the max item level we assume the pattern to break at the upper challenge tiers thanks for the collaborative effort everyone all right now this table shows all world tiers challenge tiers and their corresponding item levels this is amazing by the way so you have the world tiers we're familiar with that we got up to uh level five world tier in uh the demo of course which is going to be the max level of for item level of 32 uh, but once you hit 15, you're capped at item level 42. Now, to push beyond that, you got to head into the challenge tiers, which is going to be your expeditions. Those are going to be your end game content. Expeditions, of course, if you did not know, unlock after you play the story. And there's going to be like 15 really cool expeditions that you can get into, which, and they're going to be like handcrafted levels that you've never seen before. But anyway, back to this. Uh, yeah, you can really push your item level by going into, of course, the Expedition Challenge tiers. You might want to jot this down so that you can really be optimizing your playtime as you head into Anok and play Outriders. This right here, I think, is going to be super important uh, going forward. Now, also, for those of you that are getting Outriders through Xbox Game Pass, here's a note from We Are All Wambu. He says, preloading is still available without purchase of the actual game. You just have to search Outriders with the Xbox app and start the download there. So you can actually preload if you are on an Xbox Game Pass right now. So that is also really noteworthy. Now, this was one of the most requested features out there on the Outriders community. And this comes from, from uh, Steve the Impact. He actually did some work here on this image here. He says, uh, people can fly Square Enix, any disgruntled UI developer with repo access or any hacker collective willing to do it. Please, I beg of you, save my sanity and prevent me from going absolutely crazy while trying to manage my inventory, swap the R3 and triangle buttons or equivalent to mark unmark items for sell dismantling on consoles. Quick mark wasn't necessary, just swap the buttons. And that is a huge request from the community one of the most upvoted comments right there. Now, the community manager of Square Enix actually saw this post and responded today. Let's see what he has to say. 
He goes on to say to this, replying to this so I can gain more visibility. A swap might happen in the future depending on what is technically feasible, but I've already responded on this matter as per the link above. It's not just a case of swapping the input, there are other considerations to take into account here, or we would have been able to make the change back in December. So that is current, currently the update regarding that. Hopefully they can look into it more. It seems like you guys are really annoyed with how they have configured that mark unmark system in the game. So hopefully they can get that adjusted uh, going forward. Now also we have some new updates and replies about multiplayer scaling and gear level cap as right here indicated right here uh so we have people can fly powell who responded to this the thread goes on to say my understanding is that world tier sets the gear level cap for characters in a situation where a player who typically plays a high world tier joins a game to play with a friend on a low world tier is the gear auto scaled or does the high tier player need a set of legal gear for that tier now, People Can Fly Powell did respond saying, I won't go into too much details here, but here are some of the basics on uh, with playing with friends works. Now, I think there's an updated reply to this thread we'll be getting into in just a moment, so stay tuned. Uh, he says this, after prologue, there is no restriction on playing with friends, regardless on level and world tier difference. Matchmaker is built to match players with relatively similar power, but with join function, there is no limit other than technical ones. World state is based on host. This includes world tiers and final enemy levels. That is absolutely right here. You have to remember that when playing the game. When play on lower tier, your gear remains legal. It's just the highest unlocked gear level what counts. There is no gear scaling regardless of level difference. Loot and rewards are based on level of killed enemies. So in essence, that means you can go to someone on a much lower level and world tier or lower than your own world tier and be absolutely godlike, but it's not very effective in terms of advancing your own character. All of the above is subject to change. However, if you have like a friend that's struggling uh, to, you know, get ahead, you can help him out. So that's one thing that you could do as well. Now, here is the updated reply as well. Um, Hench the Drama says, coming into this thread a bit late, but didn't want to start a new one. Am I right in thinking then that due to no scaling, if I want to play through the campaign with a couple of friends, we should try to stay at exactly the same level to maintain the challenge? And uh, Powell's did reply saying that will always be ideal. However, thanks to extra time we got, we've been able to introduce a damage scaling mechanic based on difference between player gear level and enemy level. Basically, if the difference is greater than the two, it will adjust damage received and dealt by the player. Thanks to this new mechanic, you can play with your lower gear level friends and feel powerful, but not completely broken OP to ruin the fun. At least that's the theory. So that is actually been updated since his reply here so that is really cool once again people can fly going in there and updating the game like crazy i'm so impressed with how quickly they update things uh in this game now we have another reply to this uh crucible says this hey powell this is great information if you don't mind can you confirm two things is the scaling only working downward high level scales down to low level friend and not upward low level friend scales up to high level friend is loot drop still based on level of enemy killed to prevent a high, higher level player with access to world tier 15 loot getting in game game drops while scaled down to a low level friends content thanks and Powell replied says yes it only scales downwards yes drop is based on level of killed enemies who in turn is based on host settings so there you have it uh, right there again all this stuff you got to take into consideration before heading into the game and i think it would be super helpful uh, now we do have some additional replies here about how armor stat rolls work let's take a look see so this is the post by 509 dave 16 who says this in the context of armor stat rolls it would be great to understand the following are the rolled stat types random or static based on some criteria like class and armor slot are three stat types always rolled on an armor piece or is the number based on rarity can a rolled stat type be recalibrated to a higher level value or a different type are there stat roll limits on items? Would be great to actually see these similar to what the Division 2 does. Now, People Can Fly did respond here. Powell, once again, offering the insight. He says, all right, so there's a couple things to unpack. First is the armor rating. 
the big number you see on all armors it is based on the item level and the item rarity it's pretty simple for each rarity and level there's minimum and maximum value and when an item is created you get the value somewhere in between next are the attributes they are a bit more fun an item can have up to three attributes but the exact number is based on rarity and level of the item for example common item never has attributes low level common and rare will have one attribute but they can have more on higher levels the top attribute you'll see on the list is what we call primary attribute and it will always be either fire power bonus anomaly power bonus or health chosen randomly on item creation now below primary attribute you get up to three uh, up to excuse me two secondary attributes randomly chosen from the list when item is created there's just a few of them but enough to have some variations in the items the base value of each attribute is based on item level there's no rolling here however however attributes on item levels of their own up to six so an item at level 10 can have plus 100 hp if attribute is level one but it will give 110 hp at level two attribute and so on the level of an attribute is rolled on item creation uh, there is going to be a follow-up question that's more recent to this by the way just one moment it says at this time you can't change attributes on items so if you want to have perfect combination uh, you have to find perfect item but you can level them up in crafting when you scrap an item you get shards for one of the attributes which one is indicated by special icon then you can use that shards to uh, level up same attribute on different item however when you level up an item you'll lose some levels on the attributes the values will remain more or less the same but because there is a new possible maximum value to achieve the whole thing is shifting wow it's pretty complicated it says this makes attribute leveling mostly in-game activity but in my experience it can be helpful in some sectors of mid-game where you could use a bit of extra health but you don't want to respect your damage focus tree additionally if you invest in upgrading an attribute it will also get an icon so you can recover some shards when scrapping that item now legendary items are an exception to some of these rules as both mods and attributes are pre-made by designers all the budget all of the above is subject to change at any time winky smiley face so there's a reminder that all this could change in time as well now we do have the updated reply to this all right so let's see what this is right here now primary mix replied saying this does it mean there are no reason to level legendaries we got from the demo as you will end with lower attributes on them after leveling also when you level item does weapon rating re-rolled during leveling up and uh, Powell responded saying, no, upgrading the legendary item is always beneficial. Your attribute level may drop from six to five, but the value remains the same. And you can always increase it again to six to reach the new maximum. Are you guys understanding this? Super important stuff. It says no ratings is not re-rolled. It's increased proportionately. Uh, so there you have it. So that, I think that's going to be very important once you again hit past uh the 40 hours and you're headed into the end game and you really 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 want to start fine tuning uh your weapons big time now also we have big raj who says this thanks for the answer powell quick question to be sure i understand if i'm at max level farming for perfect rolls i just need the right attributes not certain values right the value of the attribute won't matter because i can get it to max via the shards upgrades correct thanks powell did respond saying that is correct however if you happen to get some attributes already leveled up it's cheaper to get it to the max level so that's also noteworthy as well so a lot of stuff uh right there for sure now uh also we're going to be going over your top comments just remember once again check out my discord would love to have you guys in there for sure uh because yeah it's going to be an intense game let me pop that up one more time there it is uh yeah you can join the chat uh farming strategies looking for group i do plan to have uh voice channels in the discord as well so you can pop into a three voice channel you know group and uh have a group going 
as you play. So, you know, that's gonna be really, really cool. But it's time to go over your top comments. So let's do this. Let's find out what the recent video was about. Uh, it goes on to say this. It's actually happening. Get hyped. Review copy sent out in the wild news update. So yeah, there's some copies out there right now for sure. See your replies. Rob K says, I would rather developers not waste time with cosmetics. Start building new content and fixing what's there. And People Can Fly has already confirmed that they are going to be doing that. Uh, HJM says, we're still in world tier 5. Think people are jumping the gun on loot. Exactly. Uh... I don't know how to say that one. It says, at world tier 5, it's such a low drop rate, you aren't supposed to be getting a lot of legendaries. Drop rate at max world tier should be a lot better. Also, could we all just call that captain the legend? He deserves it. He does. Uh, Girl Scout Gaming says, meanwhile, in Australia, we already have those tripod monsters. They're called spiders. <laughs> Feral B says, captain should be called Old McDonald, you know, because he had a farm. <laughs> Steve says, I would be one of those that had played for over 50 hours and still haven't got a legendary. Yeah, yeah. see, that's, you know, that's one of my biggest um, concerns with the game for sure is that people, it's so hit and miss with the legendaries right now, you know, and um, I just hope that doesn't become one of the things that holds back the game. So hopefully, you know, if that does happen, I just crossed my fingers that people can fly has an answer to that and they can adjust accordingly but there you guys have it the latest happenings around outriders hopefully i know this video was more in depth for sure but i really do hope that you understood it you know and i may make follow-up videos to some of these um details here in a more visual sense you know but uh, there you have it thanks for watching everyone and hope you enjoyed the video and i will see you all next time take care